Hi, I'm Dino Tripodis. Tonight on the podcast, when I die, I want people to laugh hysterically. I'll explain that tonight on Whiskey Business. Hi, I'm Dino Tripodis, and welcome to Whiskey Business, the podcast not so much about whiskey as it is one with whiskey. I I don't know. I'd have to ask my mother how I came into this world, if I came in uh, crying or screaming when, when I finally was birthed. I don't know how I came into this world, but damn it, I know how I want to go out. And? I want to go <laughs> out. When I go out, I want it to be a party. I don't want it to be some maudlin affair. Oh, he died too young. Well, first of all, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's not, too late for that. that. Yeah, I was too late. That. You already yeah. outlived yeah. Yeah. the odds. We <laughs> passed that benchmark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people that people that had uh, odds on how long I was gonna lost money. So <laughs> always the over on you. Yeah, always take the over on me. <laughs> but but uh, you know I I have plans. I have a I have a working will which constantly keeps shifting and changing. I've got to settle it and fix it and and like decide that's it because I have things that I want to do. Now, why are we talking about death? Well, tonight on the podcast, our, we're going to have author James Haggerty on, uh, who's got a new book out called Yours Truly, A Guide to Writing Life Stories. Uh, we'll meet James here in just a little bit, but he has written over 900 obituaries for the Wall Street Journal. That's, Whoa, that's awesome. a lot. Yeah, and uh, his philosophy on life is, is just that, that life is about living it. And some of the stories that are there go completely missed and, and, and I'm sure. discovered. Everybody focuses on the tragedy of mm-hmm. the death. Mm. But what about the life, boys? Right. What about the life? I love That's it. Right. I got to say, we've had guests from A to Z. Right. And this would be O, technically. Yeah. Ob- obituary, obituary writer. Obituary. Uh, I have more like questions. To, it's going to be an A. I could say author. 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 Yeah. Who happens to also have been an obituary writer? Well, I just and, like to throw it in the middle of the alphabet somewhere. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we, right. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> pen and per- paper person. Um, <laughs> anyway, my point is, is that I've had more questions spinning around in my head today about what to ask James than yeah. probably any other guests in a long time that we've had. Okay. So you're excited. Good. So so probably forgot my, them. my quick question to all of you before we get before we get started and do the business and also introduce the, the guest bottle this evening is uh, what do you think would be on your tombstone chip? Uh, what do you want on uh, My tombstone will be uh, fiercely loyal friend. Oh, good one. That's nice. good. Good that's one. Nice. Like that. Hands fiercely Mary? loyal. Uh, I, I think I'm going to be like r- just one of those really big, obnoxiously gaudy, like black Venetian marble that just says yeah. Hansberry, like yeah. so uh, big that everybody Hansberry. in the cemetery can so, see. So, it. so everybody can see it, but nobody yeah. can know if, like, you know, mm-hmm. very ornate. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. he a rich man? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Yeah. Whitney? Uh, six foot nine, stop fucking asking. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's been a question that has plagued you. Oh, if I had a nickel. Even for a nickel. Dude. How tall are you? <laughs> and, and, and Every I, day. Yeah. And yours? I, I think mine's going to be very simple. I think it's just going to say, oops. <laughs> 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 because I was not anticipating it. Um, all right. So uh, tonight we're going to get into the, the book and everything that we want to ask Mr. James Haggerty here in just a moment. So let's do a little bit of business first. Chip, who's doing the business? Chip, doing Chip, the business? Business. Chip oh. is doing the business? Again? I'll give it a shot. I, know, right. I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't rehearse this or, or anything. That's the best time. All right. Hey, don't forget to reach out to all your social medias. Like, find us on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. Yeah. WhiskeyBusinessPod.com with, whisk- with uh, Dino Tripodis. And don't forget <laughs> on Facebook, too. Oh, no, on... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we're on it's Facebook. Yeah, Facebook, we're on Facebook page. Yeah, and don't forget on uh, <laughs> right YouTube here. to hit that subscribe button. And yes. just, uh, in fact, hit the alert right. button and let that's that, right. you know, let's get that Beep. alert button going. Yes. That's on uh, Facebook. YouTube Whiskey Business with Dino yeah. Tripodis. Right. That's right, on YouTube. That's the way and it is. And on we're, Facebook. Yeah. We're available wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. But mostly we're brought to you by the Evergreen Network. Oh, oh Evergreen good. Podcast Network. Yeah, yes. friends at Evergreen. Yeah, been very generous with us. Uh-huh. And uh, the, we've we've uh, 
I, I don't know what's going on, boys, but we're our numbers our, are up. Our numbers are. Yeah. We came out of the gate in 2023 firing. Ooh. So yeah. maybe they've everybody's listened to every other podcast. So maybe they're like, hey, well, let's try hey, this wait, one. Or maybe they really went alphabetically and they <laughs> yeah. finally got to the W's. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <I was there. laughs> uh, maybe who knows? Uh, but uh, yeah, all that Excellent. stuff that Chip said. Our guest bottle tonight is. This is something that I, I'm trying for the first time. Apparently, John Whitney's already had it. Oh, yeah, nice. I was in Indiana last month. He was in Indiana. Quote. He had it, but he never shared it. This is a bottom shelf beauty called Benchmark, but this is Benchmark bonded, so it's got to be a hundred proof bonded. So, mm-hmm. so yes. I'll be very curious to see what they've done to improve what I think is already a very reasonable and good tasting whiskey that just happens to live on the bottom shelf of your liquor store and our like guest 20 bucks and, and how much was that 1999 yeah, baby great. oh that's well that's worth great. it yep because mm-hmm. regular benchmarks what like 12 12 bucks yeah or something? yeah yeah it's yeah. a little bit more but uh, you know proof. I, I think this is going to be a a bourbon bargain and i've never had this particular one i know nothing about it i know about benchmark we know the, mm-hmm. where it comes from yeah yeah and everything like that and we'll share that when we have a sip but it's brought to you by Jeff Gage, realtor at the Costigan and Gage team at Remax yes. One. Jeff Gage. Yeah. It's a buyer's market. <laughs> Actually, I don't know what it is. I don't know. So he can help is. with you. He it's it's a housing he market. He knows what kind of market it is. That's his job. It's yeah. a market in which you need to live in a home. You can <laughs> contact our buddy Jeff at 614 638 8711 or email him at jeffgage at remax.net. Gotta get Jeff. Gage. Yeah, gotta get Jeff. Yeah. Hey, Jeffy. <laughs> The most amusing realtor that you could ever find. That's yeah. true. He's That's fun. true. Yeah. He'll improv your way into a house. He will. He will improv yes. your way into a house. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. So we got the business out of the way. Chip, you're going to yeah. continue to walk around and mingle. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our guest, Mr. James Haggerty. Would you come to the table, please? Thank you very much. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you so much. Thank you, for, for, thank you, first of all, for being brave. Because you and I have not met before this evening. We've only been exchanging emails. And uh, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> no, 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 let me say unfortunately, because what we what we were trying to do, as, as by the time this podcast drops next week, it'll be shared by the thousands and, and millions of people that potentially uh, see it. But uh, tomorrow, he's actually in town doing a book signing. So, in advance of that, let me just say congratulations, and I hope it goes well. It's at the book loft. So, even though the signing is tomorrow, when people are watching this particular podcast, we want to encourage you, if you miss the book signing, to go to the book loft and pick up his book, because it'll be available there. The book and loft is an amazing place to go and visit is. anyway. Have it you is. ever been Have there, been? James? Today, for the first time. Uh, uh, isn't yeah, it's it, cool. isn't it incredible? Isn't awesome? Yeah, I got lost. Yeah. It's cavernous. Yeah, really oh, and uh, are you a book lover, per se? Oh, definitely. Yeah? You know, what kind of books do you do? Do you, are, do you collect them? Do you do? You, uh... Uh, my favorite is probably memoirs, um, oh, well, that autobiographies, makes sense. biographies. But I'm, I that like makes what, sense, I like what people write about themselves. Mm. And we're going to get into that too, because of the because the uh, obituaries mm. and everything else about that when they write about themselves, there are a lot of fascinating stories about fascinating people who aren't necessarily famous people. Not all memoirs need to be about somebody famous or infamous for that matter. Definitely there not. are some heartbreaking tales, people that are written by people who have just lived an incredible life that we know nothing about. Is that what intrigues you about memoirs? What I like about it is that it's directly from the source. Uh, and it's true that some people will exaggerate and cover up and lie a bit, but generally I find that people are pretty honest about their defects, mistakes, and sort of want to address those. Whereas if you ask their family what they did, they'll try to cover up all that stuff. Mm. So I think you really get a truer picture, usually, directly from the person. It's interesting you mentioned family because um, a couple years ago, I wrote a four-part memoir article for a uh, Greek magazine that covers a lot of uh, Icarians. That's the island that my family's from. And it, it goes all over the world. And I wrote this four-part series and my mother was very upset. My mother, who's still living, was very upset because I was sharing things about my childhood living in Greece in 1969. And while I didn't say anything uh, damaging about my mother at all, in fact, she comes out of it. She comes out of this four-part article, uh, uh, a saint, uh, just 
amazing. She didn't care for the fact that I was sharing intimate details about our lives back then. She didn't think that people had a, a reason or a need to read that. And mm -hmm. she was she was upset. She was upset. The article was very well received. It was four parts over four quarters. And I'm glad I wrote it. And it's inspired me to actually want to write a complete and full-blown memoir ab about that, you know, called A Boy Without a Country back in 1969 when we moved from a suburb of Chicago to an island in Greece. And it just completely changed my life. Yeah, yeah, do it. Because if, if you don't tell your story, your family's going to do it and they'll probably make a hash of it. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll probably whitewash you and cover up all of your sins and omissions and craziness and you'll sound boring. Yeah, that's true. So you, you, and you know, you may, you've probably told your family lots of great stories about things that happened to you, uh -huh. but they're not going to remember all the details. They're going to get half of the stuff wrong and it's going to be vague. It, it won't be the same. Do you find so that you, you've got to preserve that story. Um, just like you write a will uh -huh. to, to take care of, to make sure that what you want happens with your money after you die. You should do something to ensure that your stories your are preserved. Do you, do you have a journal? Do you personally do, I, do a journal? I don't keep a journal, but uh, when I was 18, 19, leaving home, uh, my mom told me that civilized people write home once a week. <laughs> and that was one occasion I listened to That's my great. mom, and once I wrote home every week for about 30 years, and my mom oh, kept all of those that's letters. Wow. That's, a, that's amazing. It's a stack about uh, two feet high. Uh, so that was a good discipline. Now, most people are not going to do that, but uh, you can take some notes here and there. You can save some of your better social media postings. Uh, mm -hmm. You can record things. Uh, See, I am a journal writer, and mm -hmm. upstairs, like I have the comedy journals upstairs that from when I started doing stand-up that I started from the first open mic up oh, wow. to the point where I took the job at Say 95. So they go from like 1988 to 1994. So and those jokes kind of tell your story. Those the, Well, there's jokes in there, but there's also stories in there. Mm. And some of them should just should stay in the journal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to include everything. Man. <laughs> the director's cut. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Right. But it's interesting, yeah. When we talk about, because we're talking, we're going to be talking about death here in obituaries. My friend Jamie says that when you die, the first thing I'm doing is going upstairs and taking all of the stuff that you didn't consider worthy enough to be published, and I'm going to publish it right. posthumously. I want you know, and and uh, we're our own and, worst critic and, and, and yeah. do that, yeah. But it, there's there's a lot of stuff up there. There's a lot of stuff up there, and. You are now writing this book or wrote this book called Yours Truly, A Guide to Writing Life Stories. Let's talk about the actual book. And then I want to get into the whole obituary thing as well, because I find that to be fascinating. But let's talk about the book for a second. Yours Truly. What's it all about? It's about why and how you should tell your story in some fashion or another. You could write a whole memoir. You could write a few pages. You could record something. Uh, you could just annotate your photo album, if nothing else. But you should try to preserve a few stories about things that, the important things that happened to you, the funny things that happened to you, the strange things that happened to you, and what you learned from them, what you thought about them. Hmm. Um, now, is this a how to do it book, or is this a compilation of stories? It's both. It tells you how to do it, but it also gives a lot of examples. Uh, many of them taken from obituaries I've written. Okay. And also from my own personal experience of dealing with my family and my own story. Okay. So you're, have you written your own memoir yet? or? Well, uh, in, this, you... in this book, I include a an obituary that my family could use if they want to <laughs> spring for $50 or whatever it costs yeah, in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm also, I, I also have uh, started writing a very long explanation of everything that happened to me or everything I think is worthwhile just in case yeah. uh, my kids are ever interested it's not that likely but it's possible uh, because uh, I wish my dad had done that mm -hmm. um, yeah when, when my dad died we wrote a uh, typical obituary about him there were facts and dates and the survivors but there was nothing about his personality 
And I feel like we totally failed him. And my dad never did anything, uh, never wrote anything about himself. What'd your father do? He was a newspaper editor. Okay. So, I mean, he, he should have been capable. Uh, That's but so he, funny. There was nothing, nothing. Yeah. Nothing and I, and, documented. And, yeah. And I realized that, you know, I don't even know why my dad became a journalist. Even that's pretty important to my family history. And now it's too late for me to ask him. So when you started writing, was your father still living? No. No. When- well, I, I mean, he, this, he died in 1997. I began writing obituaries uh, in seven years ago. Eight, yeah, seven years ago. So 2016. Uh, when my dad died, I'd never thought about writing obituaries, but I should have thought about it a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you never thought about writing obituaries, so how does one how does one launch that career? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> of writing obituaries, you know, it's it's usually the last thing that most journalists would want to do, uh, uh, because it's considered something formulaic and uh, dull and dreary, uh, but. I was based in London for a while, and the British papers had some very entertaining obituaries that were warts and all. You know, they told you funny things that happened, strange things that happened, terrible habits, along with the good things that happened. And I found myself reading these obituaries about people I'd never heard of, and I thought, it would be fun to write those. These are good stories. Don't obituaries, I mean, the, the, the you always think about the... I see short ones and I see long ones, right, yeah. and so and the long ones just like you say a list of names. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not always, so but lines. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that part of it as well, and 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 I hear kind of like the sanitized version of what they they did in life and how great they were and how wonderful they were. Right, a lot of them sound <clears throat> like it's a nomination for sainthood. Right? <laughs> yeah, uh, and there are all these cliches that people use. You know, they were always surrounded by family. And what you know? Why were they surrounded? And it's like, uh, <laughs> come out with your hands up. Uh, are they, were, were they afraid that you were going to leap out of your deathbed and try to make a break for the door? Uh huh. <laughs> and if you, you also notice. Uh, they they always were devoted to their family above all else. Above all else, yeah. You, what about the people who hated their family? Right. Yeah, yeah. You never read about those. Right. Because it's like, so, yeah. I so, mean, but it, this, this is why I don't like the word obituary, be, and I prefer life story, because uh, for obituary, there's such a low bar. Most people don't expect very much. They it, think They think that that's fine if it's just... A, a few uh, nice phrases and facts and dates. Uh, but I think that's that's not good enough. It might be good enough just to have a little notice to tell people that when the funeral is going to be held. But I think you should leave something better than that for your family and friends and for people not yet born who might be interested right. in you someday. Mm-hmm. How long can a obituary life story be? Like, especially now that's online. I mean, are you confined to you know, this many lines or could you just turn in a nine page? I always thought, I always thought, I always thought it was like, whether, 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 especially if it's in the newspaper, I thought it was what the family wants to pay. Right. Right. It, that's what it is. Usually not how much you want to pay. And so if you want to pay a lot of money, you could have it as long as you want. Uh, but practically, practically speaking, you know, you, it's probably not gonna be too long. Uh, and I think that's fine because the whole world is not going to want 900 pages on you. Uh, your family though, your grandchildren, they might. Uh, or they might like six pages. They like something. Because, you know, you look at these death notices, uh, which is what most people get, paid death notice. Uh, 30 or 40 years ago, 30 or 40 years from now, that will probably be the only trace of them. If somebody wants to look back, what did my great-grandfather do? We know you'll find, you'll find three or four sentences. Yep. Yeah. No, no sense of the personality what he was trying to do, why, what he thought about it. Do you get commissioned, or maybe that's the wrong word, commissioned, hired to do, or have you been approached by people like, I, when I die, I want you to write my obituary? Uh, occasionally, but that uh, I can't really do that unless it's somebody I would never write about in the Wall Street Journal, uh-huh. and I don't really have time for it because I'm busy writing about people for the Wall Street Journal. So but people, th- there are people who who do that for a living, you can get somebody to write your obituary and do it in advance. So if you you want to tell your story, but you don't want to write it, you could hire somebody. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So the, the obituary, over 900 obituaries at, at, in the Wall Street Journal. So 
did was that on a freelance basis or do you actually work for the Wall Street no, Journal? No, I've been a staff reporter and editor for the Wall Street Journal for over 40 years. Okay. Uh, the last seven years, this has been my assignment. Uh, um, assignment like, oh, shucks, Dad. Or like you said, this is something that no. I look forward to doing. No, I, I, this is something I volunteered to do. Uh, I, I really wanted to do. Uh, all right. Well, no, I, you know, it's in, you, you, most, most open with the, it's the thing well, nobody most, wants to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Most, most journalists don't want to do yeah, it. And, yeah. and, you know, uh, when I used to cover real estate and financial markets, things like that, uh, a lot of times I'd call up big shots and they wouldn't return my call. But now I've got to tell you that uh, lots of people are dying to have me write about them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that big advantage, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I and they don't call you back afterwards to complain either. <laughs> right. Can we backtrack just for a second? Sure. Uh, you said that your father died before you started mm-hmm. writing obituaries or life stories. Yeah. Um, have you gone back since you've been doing this job and re- have you gone back and wrote written one for your father in my book i do write a chapter about my dad okay. and I, I include a lot of the stuff that i should have included uh the first time uh, i give a sense of his personality although i'm i also note in that chapter that i'm it's frustrating how little i know about my dad oh, okay um and I, th- it, I think that's fairly common because as an obituary writer i'm always talking to the grown children of people who have died and it's very striking how much they want that story to be preserved, but how little they really know about it. Right. They're missing a lot of key details. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you'll say, well, I see your dad went through dental school 10 years, and then he became uh, a chef. <laughs> Why was that? And they say, gee, that's a good question. I never asked him. Hmm. Uh, I think a lot of people, they just sort of take their parents – uh, life as a given. Mm-hmm. They don't wonder, well, why did mom or dad do that? And what did they think about it? Right. And how did they do that? Yeah. Do you think, and I guess I'm asking a question to, to, to try to explain myself. Do you think people who do journal, and like you said, you had the letters that you wrote to your mother for 30 years, or people like myself that have kept a record of things that they've done over the course of their life, what do you do you think it's because they want to leave something behind? Because sometimes I think like, oh man, I should just burn all this and, you know, because, because, yeah. you know, because I've not gone through it and there might be some things that, that, that in there that, uh, you know, cause I was very honest and open about, you know, things that had happened while I was on the road that might've involved drugs or mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Something not you, the most, you not the most shame your daughter to, re- right. to read. Right, about. right, yeah. right, yeah. right, right. You know, but they were honest and, you know, and, and the result is here I am uh, doing a podcast on a, <laughs> on a, on a Wednesday night and, every, and, every, and everything's fine. <laughs> but did, do you think that people that do that, that keep a record, that keep journals, do you think they do it because they want people to find that once they, once they're gone? Sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. I mean, some people do destroy their journals, or uh, and they've just done it for themselves. But I think typically people want to be remembered and understood to some extent. So I think that's why most people do it. And, and a surprising number of people who are not at all famous do write book-length uh, stories of their life. And you have a good perspective. I think when I think of journal, I'm like, oh. Dear Diary, today I got so mad, me and my wife fought about blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't have to be that. You could just talk about something funny that happened right. at, at work today or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if you're writing a journal, you can write down everything that happened if you like. Like Samuel Pepys is fascinating, uh, but you don't have to. And most people are not going to take that much time and effort. But I think it's good to set aside a bit of time once a month or so and, and think of some of the milestones. Yeah, some of the interesting things that happened. And, and when you find yourself telling your friends a story about something that happened to you, um, that's a sign that it was important and interesting and maybe funny. And you should keep a copy of that for yourself. I put it put it in a little file called My Life. Yeah, I wonder sometimes because, you know, I have the same mysteries. My father died 17 years ago. I was not close to my father. And I've spent most of my adult life trying to figure that man out. And still, 17 years later, I'll come across something from a family member 
or find something or hear something about my father that makes me scratch my head and go, wow, really? Uh, you know, one of the stories I heard at a, at a wedding recently was, uh, <laughs> and it caught me off guard. And I go, yeah, your your father was crazy. I go, yeah, I know. He is pretty, he is pretty out there. And she like, she goes, no, no, no. You're not, you're not hearing me. Your father was insane. Not fun, loving, crazy, wacky. Mm-hmm. She's like, your father had an issue. And I'm like, and I'm hearing that for the first time. Mm-hmm. And that puts me down a rabbit right, hole right, and right, wants right. me to redis- try to find and rediscover, like, what, what are they talking about? And I won't get into all the personal details, but I started to find some things that were medically uh you know uh, un- unstable uh, mm-hmm. about him which which then all of a sudden connected to something else to me ah well maybe that's why he did that and maybe that's why he did this mm-hmm. and so forth and so on and then you start to wonder like well maybe you're like that. maybe that's yeah. it. what's what's yeah. what's yeah. What's, yeah. Yeah. what's seriously what's bred in the it's bone hereditary what's bred in the bone what's in the dna my sister and i were talking about this the other day we mm-hmm. were just you know we have some the, the medical things that have popped up in our later years that apparently come from our father's side of the family that we have no knowledge about. Mm-hmm. My mother, I know. Mm-hmm. You know, we got all that covered. We know the history. And, but but my father, mysteries. Mysteries. And I like to solve mysteries. So mm-hmm. the, it, 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 I wonder if that's why I write. So mm-hmm. when I die, there's no mystery. Here it is. There it is. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was doing. And that's how I felt about this. And now you know. Is it a generational thing? Like, um, uh, I, I'm the millennial here of the group. I can't see, I could see my parents um, doing that, but I couldn't see their parents being journal writers, being, you know, being open about their feelings, being open about their, um, and I, I don't know, maybe it's just my family, but I just feel like maybe it's becoming more uh, and more um, commonplace to, to do this. Yeah, I think it probably has in the past few generations. I mean, baby boomers are, are not too shy about talking with themselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, today, young people reveal all kinds of stuff to yeah. the entire world. Right. Yeah. Um, oversharing. Right. Social media. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, that, and, that, and oversharing is, can be a problem, too, especially, sure. you know, something that's going to be, you, you hope is going to be kept. You want to think about what you're putting in there. Uh, you may be willing to confess all kinds of sins, but you've got to think, if I write about this, is this going to really hurt somebody? So I think you want to write about it in a way that maybe lets you acknowledge that you did something wrong and learn something, but you're not incriminating anybody else or or, or revealing something that's really going to hurt somebody's feelings or, mm-hmm. or you know crush your kids or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that I don't know if it's good. I don't think so you, anything that would crush my kid. I think my kid now as an adult would really go like, yeah, that, that tracks. Explains it. That tracks. Yeah, that, that tracks. That. It does it. It's an old table. It, it creaks, but it it cracks, but it doesn't break. So I've don't worry about it. I've been editing it out of the Have podcast. Really? Why? Two, but now I feel like I, it's part of the show. It's part I of the I show. Talk like about it. I, know. Um, <laughs> I told you guys it was going to happen. <laughs> Some more line of question, but let's take just a break here to, to discuss the whiskey that we're having tonight. Uh, are, are you a big whiskey drinker, James? Per se, a bourbon drinker? Do you, is that the, is this is this something? Is this in your wheelhouse? Whiskey? I'm an occasional whiskey drinker. I used to drink more. Um, I once threw half a bottle of Johnny Walker Black into the South China Sea, and uh, because that's sort of my one claim to fame in the whiskey world. Why'd you throw it? Well, it was a party on a boat. And uh, people were having more and more fun, and they were passing around this bottle, and they were all sort of uh, on the edge of the boat. And I was, af- and it was getting dark, and I was afraid I was going to have to dive into the sea to rescue somebody. So I just grabbed the bottle and threw it out. We were like, "Oh no, no!" Yeah, I, I wasn't, I wasn't too popular. <laughs> a bottle of Johnny Walker. But nobody Black. died. It's, it's, the next day they were so hungover they didn't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. So back in the day, you probably you you'd probably imbibe more than than you do now. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Or yeah, I do like whiskey. I just got in the habit of drinking beer for some reason. Yeah. Oh, see, I don't drink as much beer mm-hmm. as I used to drink. Because isn't that the iconic uh, trope? You know, the the, the There's newspaper some, guy yeah, riding with the, the bottle yeah, of whiskey in yeah. his drawer. Yeah, my dad it was yeah. old fashioned newspaper man. He always drank uh, Canadian whiskey. Mm-hmm. Well, Canadian whiskeys are are, are getting. Uh, uh, very popular right now. There's some Canadian whiskeys that are that are do that are doing very well. That uh, we f- we forget about our brothers up mm-hmm. north, but they're putting out some good product. This is another thing I, I forgot to ask him: Why Canadian whiskey? 
I knew. I remember that if somebody drank scotch, she thought they were kind of snobbish. Huh? See, because I used to be a confirmed scotch drinker, and then and well, that's then what I became because I had to be different from my dad. Of course, uh-huh. <laughs> you had to be. Oh, so you so you did drink scotch? Yeah, before yeah. I threw it out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So what was he? Was he, was he a, a Canadian whiskey guy? Did he have a like Crown Royal or or Seagrams or? Yeah, those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Did, was he? <laughs> did he smoke? Was he a smoker? Uh, wait, my dad went to work 365 days a year. Wow. And uh, we was like, yeah, he's so dedicated. It's amazing. Even on Christmas, he goes in the office. Finally, we figured out he wanted to have a cigarette. <laughs> wow. And he told my mom thirty years ago that he'd quit sm- smoking. So the, 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 the office. she knew. She had to know. He was. She knew. She kind of knew. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime I've tried to say, you know, every time I've tried to quit smoking, and then it's uh, how's it how's, how's it not smoking going? Okay, Great. Okay. Like yeah, they they know when you smoke, especially <laughs> when you stop smoking, and then you get that first cigarette back after like a month or two months. It just it's like it covers you like a blanket. Like the you, when you're smoke free for like a month, you can tell you've quit smoking, and then you light one up and have one. It just reeks. Yeah, it's all over you. Yeah. yeah. So he wasn't pulling any wool over anybody's eyes. Well, he was for, at least mine for. for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I thought you were gonna say like a blanket of like a comfy blanket. It covers you. And keeps yeah. You yeah. Secure. Well, that too. Physically yeah. and metaphysically. <laughs> No, uh, I you know, I drink and I smoke, and one of them's got to stop before it's all set. So what do we done. think about this benchmark bonded? Oh, uh, this benchmark bottle, I uh, I I was I, I kind of gave you a little like, Ooh, yeah, it's good, yeah, it's good. the The benchmark uh, label, this is one of the bottom shelf whiskeys uh, from the the good folks at, at Buffalo, yep. at Buffalo yep. Trace. Yep. This is their bargain bottom shelf whiskey like i said normally the regular benchmark which isn't bad at all goes for like 12 13 bucks a bottle mm-hmm. this one is bonded bottle and bond which is 100 it has to be which yeah. means it has to be 100 proof. it tastes it tastes like 100 proof right right away it was it was it smacked me in my face right off the bat yeah but, but now but, it's but also it uh it, I, I didn't find feeling. it i didn't find it to be harsh i, I no. picked up some i picked up some cinnamon in there mm-hmm. uh yeah little hints of cinnamon and I think if you're looking for bargain bottles, people, everyday pours, we like everyday pours. There's a lot of fancy bottles up there that are expensive and rare and so forth. When it comes right down to it, you know, it's if, you're, good. if you're drinking something every day, you want it to be reasonable. So mm-hmm. I give a thumbs up to it's the not uh, too sweet. The benchmark yeah, bonded. It can be, I like sweet, but sometimes it can be too sweet. Mm-hmm. It's no, too spot. sweet. They also have other expressions. Out. They've got like a barrel strength and they've also got a, a, a batch. Really? Yeah, single. But yeah. Where when you found all these in Indiana? Yeah, I bought two of them. Two of them. Yeah. But I didn't okay, buy the you're just incriminating yourself even more because we 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 didn't share any of this 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 find. I took a picture of it and showed it to you guys. You took a picture. That's what that but was. we were out for like almost a month. So let me I let, to do yeah, let me let me tell you what the, what what sharing your whiskey really means on whiskey business. It's not a photo on Instagram. <laughs> We were all busy with family. I understand. I understand. <laughs> I understand. If you would prefer scotch, I have no, some no, scotches this is, this as well. Is actually, this is actually, I would buy this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, and it's reasonable. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah. 20 bucks. There are three questions you think that people should ask themselves. Uh, and I found them to be fascinating because I was trying to answer them in my own head as well. Question one, what am I trying to do with my life? These are the, you said there's three questions. Mm-hmm. And when people, if you're thinking about writing your life story, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sort of provide a framework. And right. Have to so think about it. That 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 first question as you're putting it together. Why is that the first question? Is that just a good starter? And and does it change where, with depending on where you're at in life? If a 20 year old were to be asked that question as opposed sure. to a 60 year old, well, yeah, it would certainly change. But I, you know, I think I, I just thought that these were good questions to think about in sort of assessing somebody's life uh, or understanding it. First, you want to know what they what they were trying to do. And it's a good question for us to ask ourselves from time to time, We don't whether we're writing about ourselves or not. All right, Hansberry, what are you trying to do with your life? As you're sitting there, I go, oh, shit, I got to get this. <laughs> yeah, I don't no, know. Seriously, let's, let's, let's put, you, yeah. put the coals in the fire. <clears throat> well, you know, um, I, I would like to say something about entertaining and, and – uh, 
sharing the arts, something to that nature. You, you know? want to, but yeah, no, no, just, no, I am. You know, because I don't I, think about it. Answer it. <laughs> I am because when I because when I was twenty, I wanted to be you know the next you know rock star, right? Sure. But now it's like, well, I've settled into this cool gig, radio and podcasting. It's like it's not exactly what I thought it was, but it's still a cool gig. If, uh, uh, and I'm doing my yeah doing this creative whatever the hell this is. I'm trying to make it sound like a lot cooler see, than yeah, it yeah, really no, 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 see, And the reason I asked you that, because you know, you're, you're younger than me, and when I read that question for the first time, I said, what am I trying to do with my life? And it wasn't so much a, a job, it's it's what I wanted the end result to be. Well, and right. I guess that's what I'm kind of getting at, too, is it's, I, that's how I'm lucky, because I've always wanted to be a creator, a creative person and now I'm lucky enough to have, be able to do that as a job, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then as I've got kids, it would be changed completely, too, because now I f- would feel obligated to wrap them into it somehow. Yeah. <laughs> so when you pose that question to people, James, you, are, did, do you know, like like we just had this discussion right here, it means two different things to two different people. What are you trying to do with your life? Is Or did you mean it to be kind of a, a wide interpretation, or or did you were you looking for specifics when you asked that question? Uh-huh. I wanted to be a wide interpretation, uh, you know, I just would like to know what people are trying to do. Uh, it could be a complicated or a simple answer. And is it a simple answer for you? I mean, is this an answer that you a question that you've asked yourself? Yeah, and I don't have anything very profound to say. I think when I was young, I didn't have high aspirations. I wanted to be a newspaper reporter, uh, and uh, I wanted to be able to make a living at that. Mm-hmm. And I think I wanted to have a family. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't uh, expecting or, you know, aspiring to be famous or rich. Um, so, in that sense, I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, I would say so. And um, then the question that was is, my my problem. I started out with high, you know, yeah. the highest, biggest rock star in the world, and I just kind of had to settle for. You got to have an idea of where you want to go and just try to be creative along the way, and maybe you'll get there. But be happy with everything else. Well, let's 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 stick with the millennial because the second question that that James has for you after you just answered the first one is why. Oh God! <laughs> I mean, this is this is like you like you said. This is a good midlife conversation to have too because. Uh, I think I get gratification when people. Uh, I, I like being. I like it when people pat me on the back. Like I feel. Uh, so I feel uh, successful when um, validation. Yeah, validation. validation. Thank you. That's what I was. Validation is important. I thrive on validation. Yes. <laughs> you listening to all this? You analyzing all this? So if you were, you know, God forbid, if something were to happen to this boy t- t- tomorrow, you'd be able I'll to. Be, I'll be ready. Yeah. You'll be yeah. writing about it. <laughs> And his third question, right. I love these questions. I, I, I'm saving these and applying them to a lot of things. Your third, the question is, and how's it all working out? <laughs> that is one of the, the third question. And how's it working out? How's it, working out? How's it going? How are those dreams going? Well, that's the thing. It's like it's all perspective because you know you look at the 20 year old version of me. I go, well, what the hell are you doing? But then. When I really think about it, like I went to college to get a job in radio. Well, what did I do? I got a job in radio. I got married to have a nice home and a beautiful wife and kids. Well, that's what I did. So, I, yeah, I mean, I think it's working out as planned. I just don't. I didn't think I I had realistic expectations. Not that realistic equals bad or less than. It just. I, I think we forget about sometimes about the the simple little successes right. in life that just happen and mm. are. You've got a beautiful wife. You got beautiful kids. That's a success story right there. Right. right? And the more and more I it's get, may older, not have been part of your life plan. Right. I you know, just like what do you want don't to do screw life? up their life. Yeah. Is, is yeah. part of my plan <laughs> now too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these questions are. I, I find them very simple and yet fascinating because right. they can go in so many, so many areas, and it 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 sparks conversation. Yeah. Yeah, Whitney, would you? You you heard those questions. You probably started thinking about it in the back of your head. What are the questions again? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what am I trying to do with my life? Oh, okay. Uh, trying to be uh, good to my wife mm-hmm. and my child, my my son. Um, do good work, and if things uh, go beyond my expectations because I try to do good work, then good. If not, that's okay too because I'm still happy with what I'm doing. Okay, that's simple enough. That's simple enough. Is that honest? 
Yeah, I think so. For the most part, I've tried. You know, you always try. Right, I've right, tried right. a lot of different things, and some have worked out and some haven't. But, hey, man, you know you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? right. That's an old saying, but it's true. It's absolutely That's true. what I admire about you, D, is like you are never stop. <laughs> you're still, <laughs> like, you're still keep taking shots. Away. And it's not about fame and it's not about fortune, but I, I do. When you ask me what am I trying to do with my life, and I can tell you right now, I just want to leave some sort of mark. Mm-hmm. I want to leave some sort of of legacy. It doesn't have to be a huge, world-renowned legacy, but I want something of significance sure. left behind that says I was here. Yep. And that's you know, and and why? I think it goes back to what you said, James. Why? Because I don't want people to have those questions, mm-hmm. like you said with your father. Mm-hmm. There wasn't any document or anything. Why? I don't want people to it's have a questions. Sad why? I don't. I want them to know something or have something to, to hold on to. And as far as how it's working out, how's it working out? It's not bad. I'm, in, I'm, <laughs> I'm employed. I'm not embarrassed about anything I've ever done. No. Well, so that's, that's okay. That's, that's saying a lot. Yeah. Right. And you're, well, I mean, you know, I did work on some pretty schlocky movies back in my twenties, well, so but. Did Dino. <laughs> <laughs> But you're at a different point. As an empty nester, I wonder if it was is another kind of benchmark for things to benchmark yeah. uh, for things to uh, 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 change. Uh, you know what I mean? Because now your whole opportunity, your whole anything you could, everything's different. You know what I mean? You're not con- con- concerned about taking care of your child who lives in your home anymore. I mean, well, I'm, I'm not. I have no comment. <laughs> He's still, he's still at home, but he's there all the time. <laughs> okay, now while we're having this conversation, here's what I'm doing. I'm watching you, and you're just listening. And yeah, as, 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 as a writer, as like a journalist, it. as a and so forth, do, do you, is that a big part of it? Do you do a lot of quiet observing, and are you mentally taking notes as we speak? Uh, I do a lot of listening. Yeah, uh, you have to. I also do a lot of talking. I find you know the older I get too, so um, I'm always looking for ideas, story ideas. I'm I'm interested in people, and whenever I meet anybody, I want to know why they're doing what they're doing. You know, if, if someone's okay, a plumber, so, I want to know well, why did you say to be a plumber. So let's turn the tables for a Can second. Can I answer again? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a plumber? Do, do, do you want to be a plumber? <laughs> There's a big shortage of plumbers. The, the, there is a huge yeah, shortage yeah, of the plumbers. Trade skills There's a really. huge shortage yeah. in trade professions. You're so really the making... question is, why aren't you a plumber? <laughs> <laughs> why aren't you a plumber? You might be more successful as a plumber. You don't know. <laughs> okay, so turn the tables on. Let's, you know, I've been asking these questions. You ask some questions. Oh, God. Okay. If you got so, there's if there's been anything that's been running through your mind, like first of all, like what the hell am I doing here? Well, <laughs> that's already a given. That's that one Poor was wife. probably the first one that <laughs> popped out of your head. But uh, no, but if, did you have questions that that as you're sitting here with three strangers talking about your book again, yours truly? That's available everywhere, right? As we speak, everywhere, everywhere. Uh, as we speak, I'll put a link in the show notes. Well, no, yeah. The, yeah. no, no Asha, I'm, I neglected to say that the Washington Post has it uh, as one of the ten noteworthy books published in December, famous for finding fascinating stories in the lives of people uh, who weren't oh. so, so oh, much. Nice. Yeah, and so the so Washington Post. Bezos. Oh. Where did you come on? The number one or number ten? Or was, <laughs> they, they, they didn't. Uh, uh, they, they didn't really rack okay, up. Right. I don't think I was number one. You're in the mix. You're in the mix. <laughs> you're in the mix. So yeah, as you're sitting here and, and watching these three idiots, or if you count Chip in the back there, you know what what kind of questions would you have for us if you were writing something? Oh God, what would you ask? Well, I I would ask you why you do whatever you do. So I'm always interested in that. Uh, I'd be interested in hearing what you think about uh, writing your own story. Have you have you ever written? You thought about writing your story? I have. Yeah, actually, I have. Um, but there's some people that are still alive. I just don't want to, you know what I mean? It's like uh, kind of you have to tiptoe around it. But I could take, I've been taking notes because there's some early life stuff in Dayton that I could probably talk about. Mm-hmm. His father was in broadcasting. So he's mm-hmm. got a lot of fascinating stories about his dad. Mm-hmm. And he lost his dad young in life. Yeah, he was 18. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so, my, yeah, there's got to be all kind of. 
My grandfather worked for CBS News in New York. See? I didn't know yeah. that. See? Yeah. I didn't know that, John. We've been friends for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> he worked the yeah. assignment desk. It wasn't a big deal. Yeah, I mean, no, it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> yeah, That's his whole point. You, I mean, you're a custodian of a lot of family history, not yeah. just your own. That It would be good to uh, make set sure that down. yeah, it's set down somehow. Yeah. Uh, Someday. You can write it down. <laughs> I mean, a lot, a lot of people, they, they wait till it's too late, or a lot of people will at some point, you know, the, the son maybe is 50 and the dad is 80 and the son will sit down with the dad and, with it, and they'll record, they'll ask questions and record the answers and it can go on for hours. Uh, the problem is then this tape just gets lost somewhere. Uh, I know. And after, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. people have to. Th- it's a good idea to, to have these recorded conversations, but there are some things you should think about. First is uh, interviewing is not just asking a question and writing down the answer and then going to the next question. Because when you ask a qu- people a question, usually you don't get the whole answer. Often they wander off in another direction, and that may be fascinating. So you want to let them wander, but then you have to pull them so back and get them to answer. The question, which might require asking it several times. The other thing is, after you get done, you should make a transcript so that you know where it is. And you should go through that transcript and edit it so that you can explain things. Because when we're talking to people we know, we talk in shorthand. But two generations from now, you know, they're going to say we were mentioning Frank and Bill. I'll mm-hmm. say, well, who's Frank? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you want to make it. Uh, worthy of being understood 50 years from now. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with StoryCorps uh, on the NPR project? Yes. That's uh, a great idea. It's it's basically that. They go around with a little booth and uh, record people telling stories. Right. They have a website that oh. gives you se- uh, questions, the suggestions, the app that, uh, to ask. Yeah, it's pretty, podcast. Yeah, is it, no, it's is pretty it like fast. the Holocaust project? It's is a, it kind of similar? It, it, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. they, I guess. Yeah, very the fascinating. Story, uh, yeah, they store it. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, it's the same thing. I, I haven't. I used to be in that a little bit uh, into that more. I, was, I lived in Chicago, and it was a big kind of thing there. And, but you're right. I I, re- I have recordings of my grandpa, of my mom, that you do there, and I go, okay, well, got that done. And they're just, wow. you know, isn't that the reason I had on my phone. at the time eighty two? I think your old mother on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. my mother on the podcast, uh, and and it was funny to have her on because she was amusing delightful but she was also guarded because while she was talking to me and i was asking questions my sister was in the back on that on that couch where where your lovely wife is is, is sitting and my sister would be like no <laughs> no or like yeah no right. not yeah. true yeah she's you do, lying you, yeah. yeah you yeah. don't want to do it in a group you want to do it one on one i think because p- people will not be as open if somebody else is listening but at the same token uh, i'm just like i'm glad i have that Oh yeah, that that shared moment. Yeah, so much her. better than nothing. Yes, <laughs> right. Where my mother and I were engaged in something right. and doing something together, and it was fun and it was it was heartwarming and and yeah, I mean, most of the stuff she told was true, but there was a couple things like she just kind of glossed over, not, not so much lied. It's like I I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I remember that. No, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that type of thing. So. <laughs> I got a couple more questions before we start wrapping things up. Who's going to write your obituary? Well, I've already written one. Uh, I put it in my book. So that, that's yours. Uh, that's the yeah. one you want. I don't know. I don't is know. Is that fair? Is that fair to write your own obituary? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. What definitely, percentage of people definitely. write their own obituaries? Uh, probably one or two. I think. Uh, so. what percentage fair. of live people. Uh, one or two percent, maybe. Uh, it's not. Know, it's not I'm uncommon. Um, well, I think it's fair. It's a good idea, but. Uh, you know, I think it's more important just to think about. It doesn't. You don't have to think about writing your obituary. Just think about preserving some stories that are going to be uh, interesting and helpful and entertaining for your family and friends in the future. Uh, now, when, when I die, whether Lorraine will spring fifty bucks to have my me my my know. story <laughs> and the Post Gazette stuff, yeah, she'll she'll probably try to find a, a discount somewhere. <laughs> Maybe this book will be a big hit, and uh, we'll cover but, it for you. But uh, should just say, well, if you want his story, you buy his book. Right yeah, there, you go. Right. You want to read it? You pay me fifty bucks. <laughs> <clears throat> That's funny. 
And what are, you know, you, you've taken this, this, this subject that people consider to be maudlin and sad and depressing, and you've kind of lightened it up in a sense that celebrate, celebrate the life, don't necessarily mourn the death. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's celebrate the life. But what are your thoughts on, on death and, and dying? I mean, when you think about that journey, uh, I, because you know, I start to question my mortality a little bit more as I get older. I start taking tests that I've never taken before, mm-hmm, right. just to kind of check, you know, and see where I'm at. I took a CT lung scan because I've been a 30 year smoker. Unremarkable, I hear. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the one time you want to be unremarkable is that, <laughs> is after a CT lung scan. Everything came back unremarkable. But but, but that's I'm kind of curious. I don't know how old you are. I'm 66. Okay, oh. so you got a couple of years on me. I'll be sixty-four. Hmm. What do your thought? Are your thoughts different about death at sixty-six as they were at say forty-six? Not really. Uh, I don't really think about it that much. Uh, uh, I never did. Uh, and writing obituaries, I don't think about it because to me, the obituary is not about death; it's about the life, mm-hmm. and the death is just the pretext for telling a story. Sure. Um, so. Um, I always say, you know, if obituaries can't be fun, what's the point of dying? Right. <laughs> right. You know, it, Which is exactly what I said at the beginning. Yeah. When I go, I want people to be laughing. That should be the title right. of the episode. Well, they, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, because <laughs> after, when, you, when you die, uh, people, you know, your friends and family, they're going to need to cry, but they're going to need to laugh, too. Sure. Uh, if you go to a funeral, the best parts are the eulogies where somebody mm-hmm. mentions the deceased's Odd habits, yeah. and, right? Or the party some afterwards. Of the crazy things he did. <laughs> yeah, and and you, when you are allowed to laugh like that, it's a big relief because you you realize that, uh, you know, the person's not really gone entirely. We still have all of these memories. We're going to keep right. these memories. Uh, Do you have an, an example of uh, of one that you that you can think of off the top of your head that, that you kind of remember? still that kind of stays with you that you could share with us an obituary that i've written yes uh your favorite you the pulitzer about. winning obituary. <laughs> <laughs> the pulitzer prize of obituaries <laughs> yeah well the one in the wall street journal today i thought was kind of interesting about a guy named albert okura who was a japanese american grew up in los angeles born in 1951 and uh he said, when, you know, being an Asian American, when he was in high school, everybody thought that he was, you know, he must be going to Harvard or Stanford, but he wasn't really a great student. What he really liked was uh, fast food. And uh, he, so he went to work for Burger King, and eventually he started his own restaurant chain called Juan Pollo. And his goal was to be the biggest chicken seller, seller in the entire world. Hmm. Uh, he thought really big. Uh, and he didn't see why he couldn't become that. Um, and he didn't quite make it. He's, he had 25 restaurants when he died at age 71, uh, all in Southern California. But, not uh, bad. Not bad. And, you know, he wasn't, he was thinking long term. He had a 50 year plan, business plan, hmm. which called for him to be number one in 2050. Oh. Mm. oh, so he still he, might get it. His, his sons are running the restaurant. They might, they might make it. They might go there. But he had a great sense of humor. Um, he wrote a very funny book about his life. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't have really written about him if he hadn't written his own story because I wouldn't have understood him well enough to make an interesting story. Yeah. What's the most, uh, with over 900 obituaries written for the Wall Street Journal, can you, can you say which one has been the most famous one that you've written? Well, that's what I was going to ask. Are they all famous? Or are they no, 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 no. They're, they're not this, all. I don't write that many stories about famous people because I'm supposed to write about business people. And all right, I'm supposed to write for the weekend Wall paper. Street, yeah, gotcha. And uh, you know, if a very famous business person dies on Monday, we're going to have that story right away. Right. So I need something for Saturday. So I find people who usually are not mm, all that well-known but ha- have interesting stories. Um, like this businessman. Right, right. Uh, but if yeah, Warren Buffett, I just got an email from somebody saying, you know, I, I didn't know somebody who had 25 restaurants would rate an obituary. But I said, well, it's not, uh, it, the question is, do you have a good story? It's not, mm-hmm. how you know, how much money you made or right. what your title was. Uh, you know, there are some people, they, they have a great resume. You know, they've been CEO of this and they've got won 18 awards yeah. and they've They've got all kinds of honors and achievements, and they yeah. went to Harvard. But who if cares? There's, if, there's, if there's no story to go <laughs> yeah. with it, right. 
is boring. Yeah. And that, that probably is a story, but sometimes that story is just lost because that person never confided, didn't give interviews, didn't write anything. Uh, and so I'm not going to write it. Hmm. Dang. I'm getting kind of hungry for that chicken. <laughs> yeah, kind of chicken. <laughs> So Steph's hungry. So I, I said I mentioned Warren Buff. If Warren Buffett were to die, God bless him t- tomorrow. Would you write that obituary for the well, Wall Street his Journal? His obituary has been written long ago. I know it was. Enough. It's already said. So it. it's, 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 it's already written. We talk about that all it's the time. It's already written. Like it's already said, like said and done. Jimmy Carter, right now. God bless him. That, He's on knocking on, on heaven's door. How right. long has his obituary been written? And not necessarily by you, but by oh, I, I, the understood you. <laughs> I assume for 25 or 30 years, and it's, it's had to be updated. Updated, yeah. right, yeah. right, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's what uh, major papers do. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good idea, I think, because so, you can actually interview people. Is there anybody, is that somebody's job just to, like, find old folks and write about them? <laughs> you know, like, uh, oh, uh, Bob Dylan, you're going to die soon. You're going to die that's, soon. Let's get your obituary written. You know, because you could have, you could, yeah. you could hire somebody full time just to work on that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, the New York Times certainly has people who do that more or less full time. They've, they've got thousands ready. I think at the Wall Street Journal we probably have hundreds ready. But uh, yeah, it's an investment of time. It's it's a good idea. It uh, is and good. Uh, <laughs> it, and so that's for famous people. But the rest of us should think about that too. Uh, we should be preparing. For a, to leave behind a story, and you can't leave it until you're on your deathbed because you're not going to be in any condition to write something mm-hmm. down. Damn details. Which <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned, famous people. It's like sometimes, it's like that's already been written, that's already been done. Um, there's an actress who died recently, Melinda Dillon, who was the mom in Christmas Story. Okay, that's right, she yeah. passed away in January. We didn't find out about it in the press mm. until. February. Interesting. And they mentioned the fact that it was reported by the Neptune Society. And I Googled the Neptune Society. And the Neptune Society, I thought it was some crazy Hollywood. No, it was a crematorium. It was a crematorium. And they they released the info. And I thought, there's this person who was an Academy Award nominated actress, uh, I think for Close Encounters, uh, did some wonderful work. the mom and Christmas story, the beloved, and yeah, beloved, and and when she Character. died, nobody, it wasn't released the next day or the third day, even. It almost didn't come out a month later, yeah, and I think sad. that, and I, I read just those things, you know, they mentioned her credits and mm-hmm. so forth, but then, where was her story? Mm-hmm. Where, why was her story not reported? Why did it take a crematorium to release the fact that she, you know? That she was deceased and were- well, I mean, she probably hadn't made any arrangements for it. Maybe she didn't care about it, or just didn't get around to it. And maybe her family didn't was care. not into these kinds of things. Some families, I, I, just, I you know, pe- some people are not too interested in that. Uh, some people think it's an invasion of their privacy. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes there is no announcement, and you know, papers maybe find out about it six months or a year later, and maybe we'll still write about it, uh, but. There's no, you know, automatic way that newspapers would know if somebody has died unless uh, a phone call is made or the an newspaper email. Newspaper can't sent. read about it in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, often we find out because somebody has purchased a death notice mm. in a local paper or in the New York mm. Times, or, and that's where you read about it. And then you call them up and say, you know, you'd like to know more. Right. What I like the real story now. Do you think that? Uh, do you find? What's people's curiosity with uh, obituaries and more morbid morbidity? Morbidity is that the word? Uh, like, I, I'll see on social media someone passed away, and I'll spend ten minutes trying to dig through it and find out how. Or uh, like my dad loves the obituaries; he'll just f- thumb through and see who died. Even you know, not necessarily if anybody see he knew knew who it was. It's just that if there was something interesting. Yeah. Often there are some interesting details. Often it's hard to find out what was the cause of death because um, the family doesn't always know exactly. Mm. They, they've been given some medical gobbledygook, and sometimes you have eight things wrong with you, and you died because your heart stopped beating. You, know? mm-hmm. uh, you, you can't really say what they died of. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes you just don't know, or you have to write something kind of vague. 
like with this chicken man. Uh, <laughs> that's man. he called himself the chicken man with a fifty year plan. Uh, no, his family that's told nice. me that rhymes. Rhymes. that rhymes. That his, rhymes. His family told me they they really didn't know exactly what it was. He had a bunch of health problems, and uh, he was in, he was sent to the hospital and he died. Um, so I wanted to say something because I didn't want people to think it was suicide or, or a, mm-hmm. a drug overdose or something. So I said, you know, he he had been, been under treatment for a variety of ailments. So people know it was, you know, a natural death uh, sure. as opposed to something else. It wasn't COVID. Mm-hmm. What's the name of his restaurant? It's called Juan Pollo. Juan there there Pollo. are 20, 25 of them in all in Southern California. Mm-hmm. Not a sponsor, but could be. <laughs> <What? Yeah. laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it won't. I think be. the chicken would go pretty well with whiskey. Yeah, that, uh, uh, the, that chicken with whiskey. Um, yeah, well, eh. I know what good, I know what good cookie pairings are with whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. You, can, you can cookies. marinate it in uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. whiskey. Whiskey, yeah, bourbon yeah. chicken, yeah, delicious, mm. without a doubt. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just. Uh, <laughs> Where do you live? In Pittsburgh, P- P- Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. I like Pittsburgh. All the way from Pittsburgh? Well, yeah. he's got a book signing it's worth it. Just to be here? <laughs> no, he indulged us by coming here a day early. Oh. Yes, I, nice. you know, and, and was, I can't well thank it. you enough it for that well because I think this whole even, this conversation has just been just yeah. Yeah. interesting and fascinating. The book and, amazing too, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we, was, was, we didn't even really touch on that, and we, well, I won't bring it up what? because it'll be another hour. But just. The newspaper industry like that that yeah. that interests me so much that you work in you live in pittsburgh but you probably just type stuff up and email it in and boom it's yeah in, for it's my job street it journal. doesn't matter really. <laughs> right. where, where doesn't, you could write where you yeah, could write you could write it wherever on the street or whatever but yeah that's yeah. i just like the fact that he's still publishing in a newspaper i am a yeah. fan of yes. newspapers yeah. and, and, the, and the fact you know i i keep i even though i'm trampled upon on a regular basis i will raise my head it prints not Dead, you know, and despite the fact that 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 social media is trampling upon me and saying, "What read?" Yeah, really. Right. Do you still get paper? Don't you? Or you? I, just... Well, before I went back to work, yeah, I had three papers. I had the New York Times, I had the USA Today, and I had the Columbus Dispatch. Then when you guys called me and asked me to come back, that you know, it's like I I I. I still get the the Sunday you're times. You're at work by the time. I'm at time, yeah. Work. So I there's no I don't have I didn't have the indulgence to get up and have coffee and read the paper, but uh, yeah I. <sighs> yeah, well, most people read online today, and that, I don't like fine. to read it online. Yeah, well, but it's fine with me. I mean, that's where it's going, uh, and you get a lot a lot of value online. Uh, you have you have to pay for it. Yeah, and people don't like that idea. Uh, they always want me to give them the article for free. Um, I can I can email somebody, you know, if I interview them, I'll email them a uh, a link to it. But that's a one time link. I'm not going to send right. send it a hundred of them to all of their friends. Um, I was a paper boy. So was I. That's yeah, a great great did. training. Yeah. So was the chicken man. That's that's, that's what chicken man was a paper boy as well. Uh, his mom his See, mom insisted. You may, have a, you may that's have a chicken why. franchise that's right. in your future, Chip. That's what I'm missing. Yeah, that, that was great training for kids. Uh, you know, you're 11 years old, you've got a big financial responsibility. Yes. I was, you know, collecting money from 70 houses. I had to collect Ooh, that money to route, pay for the man. papers. Yeah. You had a route. 70 you, you Try collecting from 70 houses, you know. Do, 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 I'll pay you next week. Pay up. Right. I'll that's pay you next impossible. week. Get out of here. Right. Yeah. Because there you are. You have to develop some character. Like, no, I need paid now, sir. <laughs> I would go from house to house collecting, and Chips was playing on every TV, so I'd be able to watch an entire episode while I waited for payments. That's hilarious. Broken <laughs> up as I walked from from house to house. Yeah. So Chips. Chips. That's Chip, where you the show got your Chips. Name. Yeah. Show and Chips. Chip was watching Chips while he was yeah. collecting. Chips watching tri- Chips. That's something weird. There's a lot of Ed. A lot of serendipity there. I have one more question. One I don't more know. question. Yeah, Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, we got to yeah. start wrapping things I, up, though. So I, what I like about it is you've you've made it clear, like you're not dwelling on the the, the morbid part. Uh, you know, on, you're more about the the story, the life. Uh, however, um, one of my hobbies and what I like uh, is uh, you know um, uh, cemeteries and ghost hunting and uh, that kind of thing. 
No, 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 you know, uh, it, we talk, uh, our buddy Bucky, who we've done the, the, the ghost stories with, uh, anyway, anyway, uh, do you, uh, uh, is your character, uh, as you, as a person, are you drawn to those t- types of interests? No, although uh, we could get Lorraine to come over and tell about the time she saw a ghost and, but, uh, Don't tempt but, me, Lorraine. But I have no experience or with ghosts or, Just cause or I, believe in them. I, I, fair enough. I because that's so, a lot of what like Bucky again. Uh, he he wrote the uh, the uh, Ohio uh, Cemetery Haunted Cemetery book. But a lot of it is storytelling. Well, cemeteries are, are fascinating. Uh, yeah. They're beautiful places. Yeah. They're beautiful, beautiful spiritual yeah. places and that have a lot, of, a lot of full of stories. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah, 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 I got yeah, a discussion day. about that too. Like saying, like, well, you want to be cremated? They go, yeah, I do, but you're still going to have a a, a tombstone. I'm like, mm, no, I wasn't planning on that. Mm-hmm. The Catholics say that you you have to be buried, you cremated, but you still buried. get buried and have a, a tombstone. That's what that's what Frank says. Kaching. Yeah. No. <laughs> one of my lawyers, one of my readers, who's a lawyer. Uh, wrote to me and told me that he's already written his own epitaph, and I think it was a really good one. It's it's going to be on his gravestone. He made the best of a bad situation that he himself created. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, I, think, uh, I, think, I think I'd like that to be on my tombstone. Uh, oh, that's that's awesome. I, and, and that is the out, my friend, that's right it. there. That is a that's great it. way to close this up. Our guest is James R. Haggerty. The book is yours truly. Tell us where everybody can get it, how they can get it. You can get it online anywhere. Go to your local bookshop and ask for it. If they don't have it, uh, act amazed, but they'll be fa- they'll be very happy to order it for you, and you'll be supporting a bookseller. And I can go to Amazon.com and get it? Oh, definitely. Yeah, for, for sure, right? And Wall Street Journal? I mean, do you have it yourself, um, social media, You kind of your Twitter account, I'm, I assume? Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter. Facebook, LinkedIn, all those. I'm gonna tic- start following not, you not on tic- LinkedIn. Not TikTok. Not tic- no, yeah. no TikTok yeah. videos. Yeah. yeah. Dancing skills aren't good enough. Yeah. <laughs> I see you as a TikToker. I see you as a. I see him. I, I'll, I'll start following him on LinkedIn. I can't believe I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah. Nerd. Nerd. <laughs> Adult. All right. all right. James R. Haggerty, Wall Street Journal, still writing for the Wall Street Journal as we speak, yes. and we'll continue to write uh, obituaries about chicken men. And meet men, and, <laughs> and, and I, I will, I'll men. continue to be employed until they hear this podcast. <laughs> All right. You think? Oh, you will be the first uh, person that happens. Yeah, yeah it would be. <laughs> no, they'll, 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 they'll consider you to be gracious that you spent some time. No, that's, with, with, no, with, no. Yeah, uh, no, I think I'll get extra credit. Like extra nice. credit. <laughs> it's a nice way to close it out. There you uh, go. Thank you, man. Thank, thank you so you. much. I appreciate it. Much success with the book and anything else you do in the future. And uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Uh, I can't do the podcast without the following individuals. Greg Hansberry on the audio side. John Whitney on the video side. On all sides, Chip Cosell hanging back there. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jeff Gates for sponsoring our, our guest bottle, the Benchmark Bonded. We're, we like it. It's, good. it's a gr- yep. great everyday pour. If you can find it, buy it. My name is... Dino Tripodis, and until the next bottle, see ya. Woo! Dump, yeah. ba-da-dump, bump. <laughs>